So hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Talk for Coaches. I am Coach Dawn, your host, and I am absolutely excited to have these two amazing, wonderful, dynamic coaches in our industry. And y'all know I let my guests introduce themselves because I'm like, they can tell it way better than I can tell it. So I want them to introduce themselves uh, after we do a little bit of house cleaning. And so one, I want to just remind everybody that Re Ready Life Coaching training courses are coming up. So make sure you sign up for our course. That's the 28th. We are doing our professional training for the master coach. And we're also doing our culture sensitivity coaching on November 2nd. So make sure you sign up for that. That's all the cleaning I have to do this week, y'all. I'm so glad because I don't feel like cleaning. So that's enough house cleaning for this. So I'm going to let my beautiful amazing guest. I really am excited. I've been having, wanting Sharika on here for a minute. So I finally got her y'all. I told y'all she was going to be here. I got her here. So I'm going to let these beautiful ladies introduce themselves. I'm going to start with Dr. AJ and then I'm going to let Miss uh, Coach Sharika introduce herself. So Dr. AJ, you go right ahead. Well, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for sharing your platform. And I'm just excited about the master. It's going to come out of today's conversation. Hey, y'all, I'm Dr. A.J. Austin, founder of the International Center for Life Coach Training, LLC, where I train Black women of faith to become certified life coaches online in one day. I do what I love. I love what I do, which is helping our coaches take those conversations and confidently convert them to clients, cash, checks, and credit cards. Oh, that's right. So sure what we share tonight, going to drop some nuggets and bless you real good. So I'm looking forward to it. Love it. Go ahead, Coach Sharika, you up. Yay. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this space with you, Dr. Reed and Dr. AJ. I am Life Coach Sharika Dunstan. I am the visionary behind Black Life Coach Connection and Black Life Coach Connection Academy. And I am a spiritual life coach as well as a certified life coach for parents and families and a resilience coach. I do too much sometimes, but I love what I do. And I love helping people in our community. Um, there's something about motivating people, activating people, liberating them and elevating them. And that's what I love to do. That's why I love being a coach. And I love sharing platforms like this with other black women who do this work and do it so well. See, you, I'm already going to tell everybody, this is going to be a powerful one. I know I say that every freaking episode, but let me tell you, this is going to be another powerful one. It really is. And what I love, and I really do have to hold space for the this opportunity. You have three women, three African-American women who have their own training schools. Listen to what I'm telling you. Three. And this is a rarity because there really isn't a lot of us in the industry. So I want everybody who's listening to my voice right now to understand the rarity, the specialness, the amazingness that all three of us will certify you as a professional coach. There are, and you guys know I say this all the time. There are people that call themselves coaches who wake up one day and say, oh, gee, I want to be a coach. And that's what they do. But you have three women who are certified, who are credentialed, who have their own schools, all three of us. So you have a beautiful pick. And see, I am not about competition. I'm about we're winning together. And I want everybody to know you got three people to pick from. And whoever you pick, you can't go wrong. So how you like that? You can't go wrong. So I had the whole space for that, y'all. So we gonna get into this little nugget. And I think this is important. So I wanted to talk about inner boldness. This actually has been a huge topic. Um, and I've been working with a lot of women, especially a lot of African-American women or Black women, women of color, who are in high profile positions. They're VPs, they're CEOs, they're business owners, they're senior directors, they're in that level. And... A common theme I've been seeing is this fear of 
letting your voice be whole, whole, held, heard, sorry, being heard because of the fear of being seen as the angry black woman. Or if you're passionate, right? If you tap into your inner boldness, that passion that you have for people, what happens is that we as black women are afraid to tap into our inner boldness because we're gonna get deemed for being too aggressive. And, and I know that we all have stories about that. So my first question, because I do think that sometimes we get confused with what is inner boldness and then that idea of the angry black woman. So the first thing I'm gonna ask everyone, and thank you, I see we have someone on. Um, I didn't get your name, ma'am, Peak Consulting. My, na my, name's, my name's Ada, Ada is an adaptable. Thank you, thank ADA. you. Thank you for being here. Thank You're you for welcome. joining us. Um, so I'm gonna ask ladies, what does inner boldness mean to you? Like, help us understand that, help our listeners understand. And I'm gonna start with Coach Sharika. For me, inner boldness is trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's trusting your abilities, um, trusting that you can make good choices and the right choices for you mm -hmm. and having the courage to speak up when you feel the need to speak and not second guessing yourself or trying to shy away from opportunities or challenges mm -hmm. because people expect you to, you know, act a certain way or behave a certain way. It's just, you know, standing in your truth and honoring yourself. Yes. Yes. I feel all that. Yes. And, 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 and you make a good point is standing in your truth and not being afraid to speak up, especially because of what somebody else thinks about how you're supposed to behave. We're going to dive deep into that one. That one resonates with me a lot. Dr. AJ, tell me your thoughts on inner boldness. It's speaking up and it's showing up. Um, mm. it's in the coaching space, I meet a lot of Black women who are afraid to do what we're doing today, get on camera, especially if they ain't cute, cute, you know? And so I believe that if you know you're called, especially to coaching, which I, as a Black woman of faith, believe is a ministry, mm -hmm. then you have to be willing to show your face and help the people that you've been called to serve. So not only do you have to speak up, you have to show up and help that gift to be, you know, distributed to those who are sitting and waiting. I always say that there's someone somewhere waiting on you. And so we can't let what we're afraid to say or afraid to do or places we're afraid to go that put us out of our comfort zone. We can't let that hold us back from really getting to the people who need us in order to move to their next step. Thank you. And no, and, and I, I, I totally agree with that. And and, and one of the things that also come to mind is, is the fear, the fear of you of using your voice because of what other people think. Many of us aren't bold. Like I, 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 I say this all the time. I am very awkward, right? Awkward. And I don't say that as a negative. I own it. I own my social awkwardness. I celebrate it. I'm glad to be this. And a lot of people don't get it. Like I'll go into a corporate meeting and I am myself, right? And I'm okay with that. And I'll speak up for people who feel like they don't have a voice. If we're in a meeting and I'm with CEOs and, 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 and CIOs and I'm like, okay, but we didn't hear from that person over there. Or we didn't hear from that person over there. I would love to hear their voice in this meeting. And people was like, what? Like, really? Did she just like interrupt? I'm like, yeah, because I, I think everybody has a voice, right? And so I'm very hypersensitive, especially women, especially women of color. If I don't think that we're able to feel comfortable showing up, I'm the first one to go, wait, wait, before we go on to the next topic, I want to hear what so-and-so has to say because we didn't hear from her yet. And she might have something important to say. And to me, that taps into that inner boldness and just not being afraid that somebody might want to, I guess, ding you for being uh, uh, bold, if you will. And I would love to give um, Ada, if you'd like to share, since you're here uh, joining in as a participant, you have any thoughts about this? Well, thanks for the opportunity. I guess the first thing I wanted to say was to anyone who's watching this later, 
Um, we didn't send out a memo. We're all wearing black. I think we just wore black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good eye. I didn't even catch that. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's pretty cold where I am. So I said, I was like, I'm going to wear a hoodie and be as comfortable as I want to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is real talk. We're comfortable here. <laughs> so, so the thing about that inner boldness, I think, like Sharika said, it starts off from knowing who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, you can't stand up and speak up. And one of the things that, um, so, so in one of my books, you know, there's something I said where um, I said, everyone has a right to their own opinion. Yeah. I have a right to ignore it. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, so, and so I always remind people about the story of the man, the son, and the donkey. People will always have something to say. Yeah. If you do something, somebody will have an opinion. If you don't do something, someone will have an opinion. So you might as well do what you need to do and get on with it. Amen. Agree. You know, yeah. and to your point about when you're in a meeting and then sometimes people are skipped over. The other thing I do in meetings um, when I notice that happening is there are times when a woman, maybe a black woman or just another woman says mm -hmm. something and everyone glosses over it. And then the minute the man says it, <gasps> that is such a great idea. And then I pipe up and I'm saying, that's exactly what but she Jessica said. said. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Jessica yes. said that. <laughs> exactly. And see, and that's a lot, a lot of people, especially in corporate America, they do not realize how often we as women get talked over. I have been on project meetings where I'm the only female. And I've even talked to my husband about this. And I'm like, is it a me thing? Like, no, no, it's just men. Men do that. I'm like, but isn't that rude? Well, we don't care. I'm like, but they should. So I've even had conversations with my husband about this. And I think maybe that's well, like you said, knowing yourself, Sharika, I, yes, you got to know yourself. And I think because I know who I am, I know what I know. And even if I don't know, that's okay. I'm still confident in what I don't know too. But it is this idea that this masculine feminine energy where women we stay in our place. We spoke when we're spoken to, you know, you're not supposed to say anything. And I think in a sense, we're taught that, which leads me into the next question. What's the consequence of not being bold, of not tapping into our inner boldness? Because again, I believe as women, socially, we've been taught not to speak up, to be quiet, to be demure and submissive. And if you do raise, you know, have a voice, you're going against men. I think there's a time and a place to be submissive, you know, to your husband and to, to a male authority, if you will. But that doesn't mean every space that we hold, we shouldn't speak up or speak out or show up. And I think there's a consequence as women if we don't speak up in the manner that we should. There's a negative. And so, ladies, tell me your thoughts on that. Do you think there's a negative? Is there a consequence to this? Or do you think we should just look pretty and shut up? Tell, tell me what y'all thought, think about that. Uh, I was talking about Dr. AJ. Thank you. Um, well, I know in the coaching space, number one, to go back to your point of you being one of those trainers that call people out, I do the same thing. And the funny part is it's always a man. And well, when I was training men back in the day, they would come up to me after the training and say, thank you so much for calling me out, for not speaking up as much. Um, and they'll write a happy testimonial of, she never let anyone feel left out, yeah. even the men. So yeah. they raise their hands too, to say, we need to be called forward too, because every man is not an alpha male that's one, wanting the spotlight or trying to take the stage. Um, but as far as what I've seen in black women in the life coaching space, um, the consequence of not showing up, not speaking up, not standing in you in who, you know, you could be is that you will enter this circling cycle. Mm. And what that means is we can only get ourselves so far 
So sometimes we do need someone else to see that inner light within us and call us forward to say, hey, Sharika, say hello, speak up, go live, do your thing, tell people what you do, Dawn, share the podcast, get some good folks, you know, so you just never know um, where else you can go when you join forces with someone else who sees your light versus having that consequence of just continuing to spin, wondering why you're stuck why you're not getting ahead, what else you can do. It, I think the answer is it is deeper. So we can we can go there if y'all want. Oh, of course. Of like, course. Like, and we should. Yeah. And 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 you're right. So what I'm hearing is that when we dim our lights, we're actually taking away other people's permission to give themselves permission to shine. So if I'm not saying hold up, wait a minute, then what message am I sending to you? or to other people, right? And so that is a consequence. Less of us will speak up. Yeah, yeah, uh, I feel that. That's part of my part of my favorite quote when you, uh, and that's part of Mary Ann Faith. Yes. Um, Mary yes. When you let your light shine, you do give others permission to, to do the same because you never know who's watching, you know? And they're like, oh, she went live. I can do it. I can she, do it. You know, put herself out there. I can do it. I yeah. heard her on a podcast. I can do it. She looks like me. We can do it. And we're setting that example and not even knowing it, but calling others forward because of the light that lives within us that we're letting shine. So yes, you are on the money, Don. <laughs> we all are. I'm so proud of us. Coach Sharika. <laughs> When I think of some of the consequences of people not tapping into that inner boldness, I think about how unfulfilled they will feel. Um, I think about how unheard they feel. And sometimes it brings a lot of disappointment, um, you know, in those regrets, the shoulda, coulda, woulda, I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have done that in that moment. And then the moment's over and you've lost that opportunity, right? And so you're spending more time thinking about regrets than actually stepping into who you are and being the person you were honestly created to be, you know, Mm -hmm. and shining that light, as Dr. AJ said, you know, because when we show up and we're bold, it really does give permission and it models behavior to other people like, hey, I can do that too. I can be that person too. Absolutely. And, and funny enough, and then I want to hear from Ada. Absolutely. This reminds me, I did have a client about two weeks ago. She had a meeting, which was funny. And she said she sat there and her thoughts were, oh, everybody's speaking up, but I'm not going to speak up. I'm not going to say anything because I don't, I'm, I'm going to sound dumb. I'm going to sound stupid. No one wants to hear from me. And that's what she shared with me. And I'm like, well, what do you think would have happened if you would have spoke up? She said, I would have been heard. And then my ideas would have been on the table and it would have been up for consideration. I said, so what would you do differently now in the meeting? And her thing was, I think I'm going to speak up next time. And I'm like, so what changed? She's like, because I realized that I have a voice and I have something to say. And I said, so what if you do sound stupid? She said, but it doesn't matter. She said, because other people sound stupid too. I said, exactly. (laughs) You know, and that's part of that inner boldness and that consequence. If everybody's afraid I'm going to sound stupid, then nobody's going to speak up. And the thing is, it's okay if you sound, really there's no such thing, but even if you think you're going to sound stupid, it's okay because you might not. But Miss Ada, I would love to hear your thoughts on this too while we're on this question. Well, you know, I agree, you know, with everything that's been said so far. The, the interesting thing is really that vicious cycle of regret. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then five years later, you're like, oh, why am I still stuck? Because I didn't speak. And yeah. I like to remind people, you know, it's it's not even just about speaking. Sometimes it's as simple as asking a question. And where a lot of us get stuck yeah. is when you go into one of those meetings where they are acronym laden and they're just throwing RSA, EFA, and, you know, <laughs> and then everybody has said a lot, but nothing has been understood. (laughs) And then you're like, I'm sure if I ask what does EFA sound like, you know, what does it um, stand for? I sound stupid. And I like to remind people that the only stupid questions or the only dumb questions are the ones that have not been asked. (laughs) Because sometimes when you ask, when you ask the question, you can almost feel the, Whew, somebody was bold enough to ask. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, now see, that's funny because I do that all the time, especially if I start a new corporate client and I hear all these acronyms. I'm like, so what does that mean? Because I have no idea. <laughs> And I'm the first one, yeah, I don't understand what y'all talking about. So yeah, you'll, you'll be like, can, can, you, can, you, right. can you try that again in English? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Tell me like I'm six, it's okay. <laughs> oh my God, thank you, wait, thank you. This is, this. I'm telling you, I knew this was going to be a great conversation. So now I'm going to make it a little personal for you guys. So how do you tap into your inner boldness? What is the thing that really inspires you when when you see that opportunity to go yeah i'm gonna speak up i'm gonna show up i'm gonna say something i'm gonna miss ad i'm gonna let you start it off as our guest guest <laughs> well, well thank you i almost feel like i'm crashing a party i mean considering three of you are wearing glasses and i'm not but that's fine i can live with that too <laughs> at least i'm in black so there you go I'm part of this party you're part of this party <laughs> Um, I guess, I guess for me, um, I guess over the years I have been in that unfortunate cycle of regret mm. and I've said time up, I'm not doing that again, you know, and so I'm mm. like, I tap into it and good stuff. If you think what I did was great, it's fine. Great. If you think it isn't great, all to you, but I've moved on, you know, mm. so I think tapping into that, it's almost like. If I don't show up for me, who will? I like that. I feel that. You gave me goosebumps. I feel that. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Miss Sharika, Coach Sharika. How do you tap into your inner boldness? That's a great question because naturally I'm a very reserved person. I've been shy my entire life. I'm a huge introvert. However, when there is something to say, I will speak up and say it and, you know, go on about my business. And honestly, I think I learned it from my mom because she is the shy lady who will tell you off when she needs to and go on about her business. And I'm like, oh, OK. So growing up, seeing her stand up for herself, even though she would be nervous sometimes and I still get a little anxiety every now and then. But I'm like, what would mama do? Oh, go ahead, girl. You got this. It's fine. Say what you need to say and keep it moving. Yep. Um, first of all, I love it. I'm an introverted extrovert or extroverted introvert, how you want to put it. Yes. So I feel you. I'll talk more about that in a smidgen because I want to hear Dr. AJ. Go ahead. And I'm, AJ. I'm introverted as well. Um, a lot of people don't believe us because we have such outgoing personality. Like you, intro yes, girl, I would look at you, call me. And if we don't have a time on the calendar, child, I'm, I'm busy. You know yeah. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things that um, is a consequence of, you know, us not standing in our boldness is also something that we've seen. Have y'all, has anyone ever met someone that's like, let's say Tyler Perry comes out with the movie. By the way, his studio is like right down the street from my house. So cool. Um, cool. And he writes these realistic Black women love slash trauma stories. But there's always one person who just swear that that's their story. He stole my idea. I was supposed to write that book. I was supposed to do that movie. I was supposed to start that business. That's, and as a result, their idea has been stolen. That's one of the consequences and realities of not showing up. And so everything from whatever, let's say you want to go on a new adventure, you know, um, doing whatever, you know, a lot of people are planning to like get into coaching when they retire. That's a whole new lifestyle. Yeah. I say start to document that journey. So if someone tries to kind of infringe on your story, you have a process that you've been tracking that makes it personal to you, your story, your journey. You're bringing people along with it. Just like us being here, we shared that we would be on the podcast. One lady at an event that I just left, she's like, send me the link, you know, I want to hear. So our stories of us showing up is going to continue to inspire others. And that, that way, when we look up a few years down the road, we're happy we have our own documented process. While it may be similar to why did I get married for, you know, it's still our story with our personal touch. So um, that's just kind of how I look at it. I would rather say that I did it versus not doing it and seeing someone else 
has kind of taken the lead on that idea because uh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. That's what I heard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> I love it. Thank, first of all, thank you for going back to that. And I'm glad you shared that. And, and one of the things that was coming up as I'm listening to you is the fear. Again, is this fear of failure, this fear of, like you said, I, I've had a lot of, uh, like some of the students I trained, and they're like, you know, some of them are like in their 50s and their 60s. And it's like, no, I wouldn't have done this in my 30s. I wouldn't have done this in my 20s. And I, and I always ask that. So what made it important now? They said, I got older and I stopped caring about what other people thought. Or it was now I feel bold enough to do it because there's other things out of my way. And now I feel more comfortable doing it. And so it is this idea of what if I fail? It is this idea of there's so many things in the way and that keeps you from being bold and making a decision and making a choice for yourself. Again, getting over that fear and to tap back on to what Sharika was saying about the introvert, just, I was extremely shy growing up too. I talked more in the last 10 years of my life than I ever did. And it really is about tapping into that inner boldness in your story. Like you just said, Dr. AJ, is that when people start to understand my story, they understand why. I now have a voice and why I embrace being socially awkward because growing up, I was so awkward and I was always afraid. But something, I, all I could do is say, I just, enough was enough. Enough was enough and I have something to say, right? Whether it's frivolous or not, and it's usually not, but it's, if it's frivolous or not, I have, I want to say something. And I think that age also has a little bit of wisdom in there too, because you get to a certain age where you go, I just don't care. <laughs> I'm going to say it, right? Um, again, thank you guys for this wonderful conversation. And I guess, is there anything else that you would like to share what you think is important that we can tell women in particular, Black women especially. And the only reason why I'm focused on Black women is because I do feel like we are more afraid to share our voice. We are afraid of inner boldness because of how people perceive us, again, as the angry Black woman. So what can we tell our fellow sisters of color about their inner boldness? And anybody could jump in. I want to say that um, it's okay to share your story, share what you've been through as you're documenting your process, you're deciding to speak up, to show up, to shine, to stand in that light, um, because people are going to also see a bit of themselves in your story. And so mm -hmm. usually when I do interviews like this, I share just a brief a portion of my story about how I dealt with homelessness and the divorce from a five-year marriage on the same day that my mom passed away. Mm. But now I use that story plus being downsized from a corporate career, dropping out of college. And I have stood on that story to build a six-figure business and teach other women how to let their light shine, to teach other Black women how to let their voices be heard, show up as coaches, serve and impact. And so one of the things that I've seen as a result of sharing my story is that I'm able to impact generations one life at a time exactly. because I share my story and people see themselves in it. Exactly. Thank you. Who else would like to share? I would like to say that as a Black woman, you get to define yourself. You get to define the roles you play, the hats you wear, the hats you choose not to wear. Mm. You can be all that you want to be. And it first starts with deciding who you are and how you will show up in this world. You know, I'm still shy sometimes. You know, um, Coach Dawn keeps saying she's socially awkward. I tell people I'm a social caterpillar, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm being a social caterpillar. And guess what? Sometimes I'm a little weird, but I can still be myself. I can still show up and take up space. And I'm here for a reason. And I have a purpose. So I will live out that purpose no matter what. And every Black woman should live out her purpose. You should yeah. stand up, define yourself, and be all you are. Thank you, my fellow social caterpillar. I just love saying awkward. I love, I think awkward is a beautiful word because it means 
different. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna hit, I'll give you guys hugs, hugs, social hugs. Uh, would you like to share? Thank you. Would you like to share, Miss Ada? Well, spot on. The, the thing is, we learn from stories. We do. And we're empowered by stories. So if you don't share your story, lots of people are losing out. Mm. You know, so I think it's so important for us to recognize that we're here for a purpose and we must live our lives on purpose. Stepping out, stepping up, showing up and shining. And it's not about outshining somebody else. Just stay in your space. Shine where you are, as bright as you like. As bright as you can. Yes. As bright as you can. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. See, this is what I'm talking about. This, to, to, I'm telling you, I, I got goosebumps, my face hurt. For those who won't be seeing the video, if y'all just know my face hurt right now, I, and y'all can attest, I've been laughing and smiling through this whole thing because I'm like, oh my God, this is such good stuff. Oh my God, yes. Um, yes, and as always, we start. We got like 10 minutes, about 10, 15 minutes to go. And it always goes by so quickly because I have such amazing people sharing such great things. And the one thing that I want to piggyback on the story part is that from a cultural perspective, when you look at our ancestors, what did we do? We shared stories. We shared information. That's how we pass down our traditions. That's how we pass down information. We shared stories. A lot of people, especially in our culture, don't even understand that when we wear our hair plaited or in corn rolls, as we call them, there's a story in that hairstyle. A lot of people don't understand that. So this is part of the experience as a people that we have. And so one of the things, and I really do want to share this I'm not sure how many of you are part of ICF. And I know Sharika, you are, you got trained as ICF. And one of the things that I've been sharing a lot is that we're not supposed to get caught up in the story as coaches. And one of the things I've had to be very clear about in some of the community of practices is that certain cultures need the story. No, we don't need to get caught up in the who said what, she did, she did. We need to get caught up in what we're doing, yes but it's important to hold space for the story of that person's truth, right? You guys get what I'm saying? And that's one of the things as a coach that I've been trying to help coaches who are coming up understand that story is powerful. Let your client tell their story because that's how you can coach them to the direction that they want to go in. We don't want to not that story. And that story is the foundation of that inner boldness. Cause I think it ties back into what coach Sharika said with knowing yourself. When you know yourself, that story is about you and how you inform yourself about who you are, what you want and where you want to go in life. Um, yeah. and, and if I may add, the thing do. about stories is it brings forth those red threads you know, it has those red threads and you're able to say, ah, I see where you're coming from. I've seen all you've been through and we then know how you can go further. And, you know, I, I think the important thing as coaches is to always remember that we don't compartmentalize our lives. When we do, we're not as successful as we could be. Oh my gosh, thank you. That's amazing. I told you, <sighs> Y'all go make me cry. I'm cry from happiness though, because I'm feeling really happy and inspired. Are there any closing remarks before I ask you guys, how can people find you on this vast social media platforms that exist? Any closing remarks? Ada just mentioned a good point, how even with stories, um, it's about moving forward. A lot of our clients tend to tell their story, live in their story. They're comfortable with their story. Their story is their sticking point, their excuse, why they can't do something, why they've never seen it done. So moving 
forward with that story. Like I mentioned, I've been able to help others through my story. And they're like, oh my gosh, if nothing else, I, you've been through all that and you can do this. I know I can do, you know. So moving forward, having that plan of action. And so I just think that's a beautiful little bow you should just put on, you know, why we should stand in our stories and share them, not be afraid to shine. Yes. I love that. And just to piggyback off what you said, Dr. AJ, it's about movement, right? So we can make plans all day as coaches, you know, we can say, oh yes, I'm going to show up like this or show up like that. But that inner boldness will allow you to actually have motion and action and do the things that you were planning to do. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. And you guys know this as coaches. Have you ever had a client where you had that intuition and you like, I really want to ask this question. I really want to ask this question. And you don't. And then after the whole session, you're like, I should have asked that question. I should and again, that is that inner boldness for all my coaches who are listening. Tr again, this goes back to what you said in the beginning. Full circle. Trust yourself. Trust yourself that what you have to say is meaningful. What question, as Miss Anna said, trust that what you're going to say is important and have value and that you can help change lives as Dr. AJ said, see, I'm pointing from all of you guys because every one of you said something that I think is a foundation for how we all tap into our inner boldness. Everything that was said. So quick wrap up, trust yourself, right? Uh, stand in your story, right? And share your light with other people. All of that matters because all of that is who you are and that is the power that you have that make that inner boldness exactly what it's meant to do, help move you forward. Okay, I'm done. I can't. I can't. Oh, and let's add yeah, this little please, sprinkle of put some sprinkles on top of that little cupcake right there. Go ahead. Because as coaches, we're speaking to people's fear. Yes. So when you're holding the space of who our clients could be, yes. talking to their higher versions of themselves. And so we're calling them forward and yes. calling them out. That's our job. Uh, see, uh, see, stop it. I can't. I can't. I'm just overflowing with so much emotions right now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, my face hurt. Okay. This is awesome. So now, I want each one of you to tell people how can they find you on the web, on social media, your handles, your website. This is your moment, ladies, to let people know where you at and how can they contact you. So I am going to start with Coach Sharika, followed by Dr. AJ and Ms. Ada. Thank you for joining in as a participant, but I want people to know how they can find you as well. Go ahead, Coach Sharika. Close us. Start us off. <laughs> All right. So you can find me at www.blacklifecoachconnection.com as well as www.sharikadunston.com. And my new program is selfcaregarden.com. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find me, of course, on social media as well under Life Coach Sharika and Black Life Coach Connection and Self Care Garden Program. Woo! Yes. Dr. AJ, tell us. And you know what? Look, you can find me and Don in Coach Sharika's group too. On Facebook. <laughs> yeah, you find us we're in that same group, y'all. <laughs> all in there as well, representing. Um, you guys can connect with me at futureblacklifecoaches.com. Again, futureblacklifecoaches.com. That's my free community for future black life coaches. You have to be a woman. Sometimes men try to sneak in there. Like, we see you. One man sent his wife on his stand to join us. Like, we know what y'all do. And I just talked to your wife. So it. again, futureblacklifecoaches.com. It is our free coaching community. And it's also how you get plugged into what's going on and coming up. If you're ready to take your next step and become a black woman of faith, who's a certified life coach, impacting lives one day at a time. Because I always say that when you impact one life, you impact generations. generations. So if you're ready, yes. Do it. <laughs> yes. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. And Miss Ada, close us out, my dear. 
Well, the best place to find me is on LinkedIn. And for people who I'm not already connected with, when you type in my name, it will come up as Ada A. Ada A, that's a great place. You can find me on YouTube, Quip Corner with Ada. I have an exciting channel. I have fun there, <laughs> speaking my truth. But yes, either LinkedIn or on YouTube. I'd love to connect. Yeah, so please, everybody, make sure that you're connected with these wonderful women. So much information, so much great energy. And you guys know how to contact me, readready.com, R-E-I-D, R-E-A-D-Y.com. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I just started TikTok. Don't judge me. But I am there. I haven't decided what I want to do there yet, but I am there. <laughs> Again, I want to thank these amazing women, these amazing coaches, and I am just excited. And you know what else I'm looking at? This beautiful array of faces is this beautiful generation of different types of women from all walks of life. Y'all gonna make me cry, y'all. So please reach out to these amazing, beautiful women. Check out their programs, their YouTube, their newsletter, sign up. Make sure you visit them because I can tell you, right? I know personally, since we're all part of the same group, that these women have a lot of great nuggets to share with you. So please make sure you tune into them. So again, I want to thank all of our listeners who tuned in, who's watching on YouTube or who's watching on one of your uh, podcast platforms. Thank you so much. Be blessed. And as you guys know, I say this every episode, go out there and create awesome sauce for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm.